Today's lesson is about how to create a new company or a new client in your Autodesk system. I'm using company and client maybe a little bit uh, both ways in this uh, particular video. Uh, in this particular Autodesk setting, we have a new company. We go to the plus sign and over here we have company. Uh, that's the setting in another video has been explained how you label all your kind of things. And in this setting, uh, we call it a company. But like some people refer to a, a client. That's why I probably use those ones uh, come a little bit in a mix. It says new company and it has a couple of tabs. We first have to fill in the information on the first section. Um, close this one. Uh, there's a couple of uh, sections in here. And uh, this keeps a little bit organized. So we're going to first do the first section. Company name. I'll just call today. I'm going to call this my uh, test company. Just to kind of show you, but I'm going to do uh, a couple of items. Now, contact name, you can save it with uh, without a contact, but it's preferred that you have a contact. So we'll call it a uh, test contact first and test contact last. And what it will do by filling out here, you right away have your, uh, your contact on this particular company name as well. There's of course a prefix, it's a mister, and there's a suffix maybe. It's a, you can uh, label those ones in there. Again, this is a settings that you have to fill in. And for that, it's going to be under the contact. So I'm going to probably not refer too much to some basic settings, but in a bit, I'm going to show you to where you can add a couple of more uh, items in there. The title, let's call him the, the, he's the purchaser of this particular company. Phone number, as you can see, that has a little, uh, it's a it's an obligated field just put in a number email is again uh, it needs to have the email uh, later on you can maybe add the contact and change the email but it's an obligated field when a contact needs to be created there needs to be an email right now i'll just do a bogus email address one address two might be the suite number or those kind of things, the city, province, if there's a province, or the zip code, and the country. This is the whole country list that's really by default in Autodesk. I'll just put something in there. You have a section for additional address information. You have an alternate phone, an alternate phone too, might be a direct line or separate with an extension. Well, extension is over here. Mobile phone or cell phone, that's how it's called, effects. How much is being used? Now here's a couple of more uh, important types. By default, it will be a lead. So you get a new client, a new company put into the system, it becomes a lead. A lead can have an opportunity, but since it's a lead, it doesn't really process further into your system. But that you need to elevate it to a different uh, uh, thing. So a lead is just somebody that, that has an idea of maybe you can uh, market to it. If it's a prospect, then you can do uh, opportunities and you can sell, but still with a prospect, you can't build with, you can't create uh, tickets. For that, it needs to be a true customer. Now, there's also uh, the types of debt. That means it's a client that, that has no activity or maybe it, it went bankrupt, so you can put it to debt. Client that maybe went into some other stages, you can put it to cancellation, however you feel like how you put them. Um, and there's other ones too, is vendor and partner. Now, if you label one as a vendor, that's very needed. That's for your inventory module needed. So make sure that if you create a new company that's going to be your vendor, that is also listed as a vendor. It's also good for your mailings because if you do a mailing to your end users, if you have them filled out correctly here, then you can unselect your vendors and then your vendors don't get your, your mailings for what you want to uh, market to them. And the same to do with a partner. Today for this uh, example, I'm just created as a customer. And we also have a classification. There's a whole bunch of classifications. Now you might say, how do we get there? That goes to here. We go to admin. And then we have here companies and contacts. And that's where we hold a whole bunch of those items we can set up at the same time. As you can see over here, there's a list classification. And that's a set that we have in here. the classification icons and we can just say okay what kind of client is this particular let's call this one and all you can eat buffet that's a good one account manager you can choose whoever is going to be responsible of this particular account territory name you can also in what kind of regions somebody is going to sell 
let's call it Southwest territory name again. You can set them up over here by going to this section. Then you have market segment. Uh, this is kind of uh, combined in, in uh, groups of salespeople. They have a team blue, a team green, team red. Uh, this also can be set up here in the, in the segments. Uh, but another way is also to do is that you can say, you know what, okay, somebody is, although they're in the southeast, their market segment is, let's say, hospitality. So that's also kind of ways on how to segment your, uh, your groups. Uh, it's a particular industry where you are uh, uh, working on. Competitor, there's nothing in this case in this setup, but competitor is also here. Again, a list of competitors you can put in if you mind, uh, if you want to track those kind of items that who's going to be a, a competitor. Parent company name, so in the case this company is a subsidiary of something else, then you can put your parent company there and a website and maybe a company number, they'll speak for themselves. Here is the user-defined fields. The user-defined fields is another lesson, but uh, for an example, we created some customer uh, user-defined, some company user-defined field over here. We like have a customer team, so you can even uh, user-defined field with, we just basically made it a name. And in this case, we did some other items in there. We have a lead source as well to know like, okay, where did it came from? It was, for example, a walk-in. A number of employees is also a user-defined field. So you have to manually create these user-defined fields first, and then they will populate over here. But once they're here, you can do a whole bunch of items with it. A number of employees in this case is 15. Same thing what we did with the uh, contact and user user fields. Also a couple of items, and this is kind of good days, like, hey, birthday, have it in there kids names so there's good items as well now let's go to subsidiaries and as you can see there was no error message meaning i filled in all the information that the, that the system needed and a subsidiary is also a kind of relationship you have the parent child account where you have a parent account where you can build everything and all the branches are their child accounts uh, this is also where you can do a subsidiary and uh, that's where uh, you can also uh, add some clients that are, are combined with it. Again, you can just pull up this menu and it will bring up your whole uh, list of clients that are in the system. And you can choose, choose the one that, uh, that you say, okay, this one is going to be the one that's needed there. And there's the tab, save uh, site configuration. There's a whole bunch of, again, it's all user-defined fields that we put in there. And that's where you can uh, explain to people, to your text, okay, what is the setup for this particular client? Now we press save and close, then this company has been created, but we're not done yet because there's a couple of more items that, uh, that can be configured once this company has been created. I'm waiting for Autotask to process this particular uh, item. And Autotask created the, the company already uh, with the company dashboard and everything that by default has been set up. We'll show you another one. But now if you go to edit, we're going to edit this company. I have a couple of items where we can still go back and modify items. And in here you can see the items that we have over here and we can easily modify them here. We have the additional info. There's a couple of items you can add as well. So the URL for Twitter and LinkedIn. User defined. This is what we already fill out. Site configuration. And now here's a separate section is an alert. This is an important item too, which you can put over here. Uh, let's say you have a client that is, uh, that basically you need to notify somebody when a ticket is being created. Well, you can do it on the ticket the alert, uh, the detail when it's always visible. Uh, but you can say, okay, inform Bob. And then you can say inform on ticket. You can say inform Bob and John. And here we can say maybe help desk only client. So we can put all kinds of notifications in here. And uh, again, those ones will pop up right away in a yellow bar. This one for a new ticket alert. This one just for ticket detail alert. And even when you go into the company, you always say you see inform Bob. So that's a good one. Uh, also to give some extra notification to maybe kind of predefine your company, but they have it a little bit more visible because this is going to be on a yellow bar on the ticket. You might have a, uh, let's say, a uh, sort of a classification that the client is only a help desk client or an all-you-can-eat buffet client in this case. 
but with uh, doing this one, you get a yellow bar on top and that, that gives a little bit more visibility to it. Now on the company detail, we also have some extra options. And as you can see right here now is the yellow bar, the one that was saved. So this is inform Bob. That's how your alert works. On company detail, there's a little tab going down. And it gives us a little couple of more items as well. So these are all the, the items that are available for this particular client. Uh, one thing that I want to show you too is the invoice preferences. And here you can define uh, for this particular client or this particular company what your invoice preferences are. As you can see over here, it can say, okay, what default template do you need to choose? There's the, of course all those invoice templates that are created, so you can choose which default template. Is the client tax exempt? Is there a tax region that needs to be selected? Lots of items all available here and to modify this particular client. I think that's all for today on how to create a uh, company and using the, the settings. Again, here in the, uh, the admin section, play with all these kind of things. There's the, even the list of the countries is in here. Uh, there's classification, there's the competitors you can set up. But also look in, here in the bottom with, uh, with utilities. There's a couple of easy items. So there's a company merge. Let's say you create a company and then somebody else creates a company too. And later on you find out that it's for both of you. In that case, you can just easily uh, merge them from here. There's also a company import, also tools that you can use. You can use the contact import. I'm not going into detail. These ones are, I don't want to say pretty self-explanatory, uh, but you have to go in here. The company dashboard is also an item that's going to be explained in a separate lesson on how to create a company dashboard. That's what you see over here, how to get these dashboards and uh, what you can all put in there. Another handy feature in the edit company section two is the one that says the round trip distance. Now be advised that this option only pops up once you've created the company or the client. Then you have to go back into edit the company and then this one will pop up. This round trip distance, here it's in kilometers, it can also be in miles, is the round trip to your client. Uh, let's say it's, it's 20 and you can save it over here. It can easily be used for calculations when you need to know like, hey, how much is it to the client? But there's another benefit as well. Once you create a charge on a ticket and you charge the client for your trip charge, then you can create the correct the or select correct mileage code and the mileage code will fill in automatically the unit cost the unit price and the quantity so this is a good field to have in there if you charge trip charges uh, to have it in there but also it will be handy also to calculate okay how much time will it take uh, for my uh, technicians for my engineers to go to the client another button that also pops up once you have created this company and you go into the edit company is to check this box company has opted out from surveys of course we want to leave it unchecked but there might be companies that you say, okay, well, these, this client or this particular company, they don't want to have any surveys. Here you can check it off. It only works when you do the surveys from within Autotask. If you have an external survey uh, system, then of course this doesn't apply. But I just wanted to make sure that you're aware of these two extra items that only pop up once you created a company and you go back into edit company. If you have any questions or comments, please visit our Facebook group and you can post a comment there. Thank you.